and welcome back to the fourth chapter in this series today we're going to look at adding some lights specifically to our asset so here i am in the aquabot lighting assets folder structure and i have a lot network dedicated to the authoring of lights um, into the um into the asset so let's dive in have a look so here we are we have brought in a asset reference and we are looking straight at the look dev so it's kind of the the um the product of the the look dev scene essentially so this is all we have and i'm not changing the variant here <clears throat> and if you look down here you can see we're just working on default 03 and then damage load 01 and this is the proxy mesh here looking at exactly the damage mesh where you can see the the bits are missing from it and things like that so this is just the um OpenGL open gl usd preview representation in the viewport and if we if we render that you'll get a spotlight um <clears throat> created from the camera a headlight and you'll kind of see the the asset just loading in so we know everything is kind of working on our part there so what i'd like to do next is adding some some lights to maybe around inside of here and maybe one at the end here and maybe two here maybe two there maybe an led there or something and we have emissive textures here already and we have some emissive shaders applied to certain things which you can see as well um interesting how the uh material x has stopped working just then i'm sure that was working before <laughs> it might be a little might just be my imagination i'm not sure um it's working when it's rendered but sometimes i see this works in the viewport as well um anyway not important so we're going to add the lights in so i'm going to perform a layer break because i just want to kind of create a layer dedicated to the the lighting department and i'm going to set the variant to a different color just because we can it doesn't really matter at this point i don't think and then i'm going to make some points so i'm going to take this part and i'm going to feed it into this node here which is a sop create node i'm going to create new i'm going to create some new geometry i'm going to create some points so what i'm going to do is create some points so that i can instance a light onto those points so i'm going to create a collection of points in here if i go in you can see this has been a manual process but you can see what i've done here from the it's very simple i've just created a circle like so and then i've just transformed this where i need it to be basically um and then i'm basically creating a normal and I'm extracting the center point, and that's the point for my light. And what I've done is I've brought in the vehicle. You could actually just do it through viewing through here, but if your scene's quite messy, this can get quite buggy and weird. So I've just imported the lock and I've just been transforming this circle around until I could position the light here, like so. So I essentially made an orientation and a point with an orientation using the normal that's the instance the light will basically attach to this and instance onto that so it's very manual and i've done the same here i've created the gun lasers and if you look down here we'll have the headlights and then we'll have the gun lasers And over on this side, I've created um, some more lights here, like so. You can see the normals there. And that's because I've just orientated them and I've just positioned them based off of eyeballing this, like so. And you could just mirror this across if you want. I didn't, to be honest. And then I've just, again, put a light source there. So essentially we have, um, I can preview all of them here and you can see that I've got a point and I've got them in like different kind of sets. 
So that was just a very manual way. Now, if I'd have thought about this up front, I could have potentially have built this into the model and had some kind of piece of geometry there with the right orientation there set up as well. Um, but this is just me adding this in last minute. I didn't know when I was modeling this that I was going to put lights, actual real Houdini lights and not an emissive object or an emissive texture, put lights in there. So that's all I've done. So it's quite, it's quite time consuming. And if we had a very large model with lots of lights, we would do this procedurally. We would find the correct way of doing this. Um, because this model came in from Mo Nomad Sculpt, I had to kind of manually place point and create the orientation and wanted to visualize that so that's kind of why i did it like this so this is the collection of points so we'll just jump back up now in here and then i create a light essentially at the origin three different lights i think they're the same type of light i'm just using a sphere uh, with a spotlight so it's kind of it looks like they all look like this and that's kind of like my collection of lights and then i'm going to distribute this light into the appropriate just disable the highlighting i'm going to disable the model I'm going to there we go distribute this light with the right orientation the one in the middle will hide that that's the that will be the origin of the scene and I don't know if it contributes to illumination, but what we'll do is we'll prune all of the prototypes later, but we essentially bring in the base name and we bring in the, the lights here like so, and we put them under the actual asset like so in lights. And you can see the prototypes are becoming, well, you're getting a collection of prototypes. So if I went down, you'd see start to do the same thing throughout so it's kind of very so this node and this node and this node are exactly the same i'm just creating a base name so that's kind of where this name is coming from up here like so so it, and each of these instance primitives are going into the lights kind of order here so they kind of exist under here so if we were to move this around these lights would follow so this central light and here I'm just going to prune that and that's pretty much a very simple way of instancing like one light several times now you could because when when you go in here you create the points you're actually back in traditional Houdini world you're in SOP so you could kind of create attributes on those points like you could create an emissive attribute and randomize the color you could create an intensity and have that flicker and the attributes on those points if the attribute is named correctly and it corresponds to the shader, for example, you could, or the attributes that you want to use, you could bring those in and the um, instancer would would pick that up and you would get the, the correct attribute instance onto the light. But I haven't done anything like that. Um, so I've just kind of colored the lights and I've got this light filter here. This This is just adding two Karma light filters and I'm to be quite honest they're just gels and I'm just coloring the I'm just changing the exposure and I'm just tinting them so this is just to remind me that we can do this but they're not it's not really significant because I'm actually tinting the light already as well so it really doesn't make much of a difference in this case and this one doesn't even have light filter in there but this is really cool if you want certain patterns to be projected out on on the lights and stuff but the main takeaway from this is that we we can have three lights that we can instance onto the points and position the direction of them so you can see that the position of those kind of lights facing outwards. So we could actually reconsider how we do this when we rig this as well. But for now, this is a very cheap way of getting some lights onto the model. So we would then prune the center one here so you can see that I'm doing that. So it's just cleaner in the scene and then here I was just again taking the, the neon shader from within the look dev material library within our asset just go down here I was taking the neon shader down here and I was just turning it green and just making it flicker again so 
You may notice when we add the lights, we don't add the lights. Sorry, when we go up here, it's you can actually see the stuff, and then as soon as we add the lights, Houdini kind of knows this is a light, and this is the lighting contribution to the scene right now. So, it, for beginners, this might be a bit confusing. So, if we were to just render armor right now, you would get a generic light in the scene. It's Houdini trying to help you. It's just saying, hey, you need something to see your model. Here's a light. Until you give me a light, I will give you a fake light that exists <clears throat> always from the camera. As soon as we add some lights in, it'll turn dark and we don't have any environment lighting. But this is the lights now from, <clears throat> from here. <laughs> so you, know, you can see that, um, you can see the lights. I can disable the visual, visualization there of the icons. And you can see there's two lights in inside of here and there's one light in here and this like laser gun thing. Um, so we could kind of start adding as many lights as we want. And then I've also decided just to take, whoa, take the, um, the shader here that was shipped with the look dev and just change the emissive texture on there as well. So we can do a uh, like kind of flickery thing as well. So, yeah, so it's quite, it's quite, um, there's so many things you can do, um, on top of the asset once it's ready to add lights to. So we can now save this to disk. And again, I've got my standard um, export structure where it would export to the, um, to my USD Aquabot. And then I would just author into lighting folder here like that. So I would just version it up and stick that in there. I would just save to disk very quick. And now I can use an asset reference node and I can bring the look dev back in and then I could add in the lighting like so. I think I sublaid some animation in there at this point as well, but I, I don't actually need that right now. I'm going to do that um, later. I'm going to duplicate this. So we now have two instances of this sat on top of each other. And then I'm going to do what we did before and just create a layout. And then as you saw in the previous one, we're going to layering an animation for each asset. So you'll get this kind of hopefully um, spinning. In fact, let me quickly just put this through the camera and the light rig and we'll look through that. And we should still have the animation on here, two different types of animation. That, that is actually moving differently as well. And we should now have um, two light rigs excluding the environment light. I wonder if you could exclude that from the viewport somehow. There used to be a, a, a way of doing that in traditional Houdini world. <laughs> so, but yeah, you can see the, the lights that I've authored now. So, you, so at any point now, you could even gain access to those lights and change the color of them as well. Or you can create, you could kind of create different variants of this as well and have different lighting modes uh, and you can just go crazy but it's a nice way of just adding a layer of lighting like we've done here so i'll switch this on look through the camera um i will look through let's look at the blue one fire render off okay so this has started to render and you can see the um the emissive texture, uh, sorry, the emissive material is flickering green on both. I mean, they're obviously going to flicker at the same time because we didn't put anything in the expression that would offset based on a different instance, which you could totally probably do somewhere in here. You could probably, if you wanted it to be always flashing green and, and you wanted two of these, but you wanted them to be different offsets let's just see if i can get a frame where that actually does there you go it is working we could probably vary this with the um with some variable some offset so that each different asset gets a different offset or we can just do it down here and just pick the uh, edit material again and stick it here and declare the correct asset we want and then just do a, a seed or something like that so it's it 
there's many different ways of doing it. It depends what you need. But the main point of this is you can see the lights hitting the gun there. And if we put this into somewhere which has like volumetrics or something, you'll see some directional cum like lighting, beams of light maybe or something. So that was just a very quick um, example as to putting in some some lights into the asset as well. So there's a lot of things you can do with this, I guess, which is really exciting as well. So yeah, there we go. Thank you for watching.